established in that another prophecy was given to Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth. And uh, the Bible tells us that they were very old and she was barren. They've been praying for to have children and they could never have children. Now, I believe that she was 88 and he was in 98. I believe it was 88 and 98. That's, that's, uh, that's what, that, that, I think that was the age right there. 88, 89 and, and 98 or 99 when God gave them the promise. And so a year later or so, they had a child. But the promise came to them when they were very old. And God performed a miracle in their lives because God promised that they would have a baby and his name would be John. And that will become John the Baptist later. And he will be the one that would kind of open the door right before Jesus came into the picture. And so we saw the prophecy to Zacharias and Elizabeth and the, pro and, 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 and the powerful, powerful ministry that God gave this young man, John. We're going to look into that a little bit here today. But then also we see also the prophecy that God gave to Mary, the, the young lady that was to be the mother of Jesus, the earthly mother of Jesus. And we saw that last week that... The Bible says that she will be pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. That this baby would not be from any earthly father or man, but this will be directly from God. He will be called the Son of God because he would be God, the Holy Spirit, that will overshadow that young lady and that she will conceive and have a baby. And this baby was not, again, from any, any, any man. This would be from God himself. The birth of Jesus, we established that last week, that the birth of Jesus was set apart from any other birth in this world. It's a unique and the only one that has been born of a virgin. In other words, every, every baby in this world, hello somebody, uh, that has been born, is because there's been a union between a man and a woman. Or even now they have it where they, 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 they're able to inject you or they're able to do certain things that they do so they can have babies, right? Well, God says, I'm going to go ahead and have my son and I chose a young lady and through this young lady, I'm going to have my son Jesus that's going to come to this world and it's going to be a powerful, powerful gift that I'm giving to the entire world. His name was to be called Jesus the Son of God, born of a virgin. We established that last week and how powerful it is that there is no one like Jesus. There is no one like His birth, born of a virgin. Come on now. And sent from God, from God Himself, so that He can set the captives free. Hello, somebody. See, Jesus was conceived in the womb of His mother Mary through the Holy Spirit without the agency of a human father. And He was born while Mary was still a virgin. Think about that. Just think about that. He was born what, what, while uh, Mary was still a virgin. She's never been with nobody, never, never had uh, uh, sexual relationships with anybody, and she had a baby. Hello, somebody. This is powerful when you start thinking about it. Because there's many miracles that take place in the Bible where uh, women that uh, of age, barren women that could not have babies, God performed many miracles all throughout the Bible and gave life and gave them... Uh, uh, the ability to, to have children at an old age and they were barren as well. So those were miracles. But also they, they had husbands. Hello somebody. But not with Mary. So this is the difference is that a child was born and this woman never has sexual relations with anybody. It's powerful. It was God. God says, I have chosen this one and I'm going to bring my son into the world through this young lady. It's powerful. There's nobody else like Jesus. I want you to know that. So this Christmas and this entire month, we celebrate because God has sent us a gift to all of us, his son Jesus. It's a gift that God has sent all the way from heaven to every one of us, to the entire world. Why? Because we needed it, and we still do today. How many still need Jesus in their lives? If you do, give the Lord a good praise, right? We still need Jesus in all of our lives. So now, 
If this gift, we establish that, that this gift is a gift of new life and a gift of hope, new hope that God brought into this world. That's why we call it When Hope Was Born. That's, that's, that's the uh, title of uh, our entire series. Now, we celebrate Jesus this Christmas. Next week, we're going to celebrate Jesus big time. Because God sent him to us as a gift of new life and new hope. Now, what do you do? It's a big, tough question here. What do you do when someone presents you with a gift? Come on now. Come on now. You take it, right? You don't have to think about it. You just take it. See, when you're presented with a gift... You have to make a choice to take it or to reject it. To take the gift or to reject it. I don't know anybody that's rejected too many gifts, but anyways, you know. Um, see, so we all have agreed that this gift is a gift of a new life and new hope. And it's a gift that God has given us. So the first thing that... I want to say about a gift, because this is a gift that God has given us. Number one, Nate, if you have it, we must receive this gift that God has given us. In order, in, 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 in order to, to receive everything that comes within this gift, the first step is we must receive it. See, listen, if someone gave you the keys to a $5 million mansion... As a gift, just because you got it for free does not mean that that house has no value. It just simply means that whoever gave it to you paid the five million for you. I want, I want you to begin to understand what's taking place here. Because a lot, of, a lot of times, just because the gift is there, available to us, sometimes in our minds, we begin to think as if, ah, it's cheap, or we don't value it, just because we didn't pay for it. But we need to understand that when the gift came to us, His Son Jesus, when Jesus came to us as a gift, it's not that it's cheap. In fact, it's the most valuable gift that anybody can offer, that anybody can have. It was the gift of salvation. Come on now. It is the gift of a new life. It is a gift of hope, a renewed hope, a new hope in all of our lives. It is the most expensive gift that anybody can give, but you don't have to pay for it. The only thing is that it's a gift. It's already been paid for. Hello, somebody. God paid for it all. God paid for it all. He made it. And that's why it's a gift to every one of us. Because he paid for it. He paid with his very own life. So that it'll be free for you. It'll be free for me. See, sometimes the gift is there, but we don't receive it. We know it's there. Oh, we understand it, but we don't receive it. But God says it's a free gift. But I want you to understand how valuable it is. Therefore, receive it. Receive the gift that I've given you. Because it's free to you. Does not mean that it's cheap. It simply means that someone else paid for it. So you don't have to pay for it. That's it. Remember that. Every single day, remember this Christmas, there is a powerful gift. Oh, you want to, you want to, what, what else? What they got for me under that tree? What they got for me? The gift, the gift. Understand. Yes, understand. Those are small little gifts. You got a huge gift that God, all the way from heaven, has made available for you, has given it to you. And it's paid for. And it's the most expensive gift that this world can ever have. Hello, somebody. And it's given, it's available. Second, when you receive a gift and you receive it, please open it. Please open it. Don't receive a gift and just leave it in the, in the box with all the nice paper and everything, but still wrapped in there under the tree. Hello, somebody. No, 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 no. Don't leave it under the tree. Don't forget it's there. Anybody ever had a tree and then you, when Christmas is over, you're about to move it and you find a gift in the back? And it was for a couple of relatives that didn't show up. They never came to pick it up and all that. Yeah, yeah, some, some of you are going like that. Yeah, right. That happens. 
Some people, hey, I got a gift for you. Come and pick it up. They never show up like, I don't care about that gift. You know people do that with Jesus? You know people do that with Jesus? She is a powerful gift. And many people just leave it there. Hello, somebody. They just leave it there. See, we need to understand that God sent this gift so that he can give us a new life and to make us better. That's why God sent it, to benefit us. In other words, if your gift was a pair of nice shoes, what do you do? You wear them. If your gift is a nice CD with the kind of music that you really, really like, what you do? You play it. If your gift is a book, I mean a powerful book that you've been looking for for a long time, you read it. But if this gift is Jesus, open it up. Let him save your soul. Let him change your life. Let him make you better. Come on, come on, give the Lord a good breath. Open it up. Open the gift. Let him make you better. God wants to make us all better. God wants to change all of our lives. Receive the new life that is within this gift. Embrace the newfound hope in Jesus Christ. Let this gift make you better. Make your life better. Everything about you becomes better when you begin to open this gift and begin to allow it to impact your life. Not only do we receive the gift, also we open it, but also we show it off. Come on now. We like to show off this gift. Hello, somebody. Let other people see that you got this gift. I said, let other people see that you got this gift. Smile sometimes. Smile. It's all right. You going through it? Yes, but it's going to be all right. <laughs> Ever I go, I, you know, I got a nice Apple Watch here. And it, it's, it's a gift. Nice, exactly. That's what I get a lot of times. You know, I go to the gym and, and sometimes I, I forget to take it off, you know. And when I'm already, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice watch. I'm glad you ask. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a gift. You know, our, our, our church, they got together, put some money together, they went and bought it for me. You know what, what he can do? He's able to track down how many steps you take in a whole day, how many, how many times you breathe. And then, and then when he sees that I'm a little, a little stressed out, this thing pops up and he says, take a little breath. <laughs> Take deep breath. He says like that. Take deep breath. It can help your whatever with your heart rate and all that stuff. He tells me all the time. And I tell these people, yeah, you know, he helps with my heart rate. And then he tells me how many miles I go and how many days like that and all that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, our church, they got together and they gave me a gift. And wow, it's a beautiful gift. Yes, yes. You know, we have services on Sundays at 10 in the morning. And then on Thursdays at this time. And we have young adults. And then we have youth gang. And then we have for children and all that stuff. Yeah, it was a gift that they gave me. The church got... I use every opportunity I get to show off the gift that I received. You know what I'm saying? It's a nice one. Hey, I drive my car and I go in my car and they see my nice, my nice uh, uh, tires, you know, the, the, the car. And they say, wow, those are nice profile tires. Oh, yeah, yes. You know that our church got together a couple years back and Pastor James was there and they got all this money together and they gave me a set of tires and all these rims and all that stuff. And I went and I, I, I did all that. And the church got it. Really? The church got it? Yeah, the church got it together for me and they gave me a big old gift. Man, it's a nice one. Huh? It's a nice, nice gift. The church gave me. Our, our service is at 10 in the morning and then also on Thursdays. I got this service. Da, 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 da. And and the service is like this, like that, like that. Said, yeah, it was a great gift. Look at it, nice. I use every opportunity I can to use that gift to connect them with Christ. Every single time. When people ask me, uh, uh, see if that door is open. Can, can you, can you uh, Mike, real quickly, and give me that, you know, my, 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 my nice 60, 64 Chevy right there. My low rider. Boom, ba, 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 ba. Every time somebody, Yolanda, where's Yolanda? Is she here? Yolanda, all right, Yolanda. No, 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 they said the green one, the green one. The green one. 
because I got my homies in the car. I want to show the homies in the car. Every time somebody comes into my office and they start looking at that was a nice car too, huh? I bought that one. Anyways. <laughs> I brag about this one coming coming over here because there is a, there's a nice little car. <laughs> hey, 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 it's a convertible. I brag about this one. My grandson is trying to take it home. He's just like, grandpa, 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 I like the car. Can you give it to me? Grandpa, grandpa. I said, no. I checked it out online. It's like 500 bucks. I said, this one, uh-uh, it wasn't cheap. I don't want you. No, no. Oh, grandpa, grandpa, can I have it? No, pray hard. Maybe one day I would buy you one. You know, but but no, you're not getting this one. But I tell I tell them it was a gift. You know, this was a gift from a powerful man of God. And you know, this man of God got a little sick. And and you know, right before he passed away, about just about a month or so, he walked into my office as a pastor. Guess guess what, Pastor? I went and I got you a little gift, and he gave me a gift. And then he started to do this in front of me. He said, Pastor, I hope you like it. <laughs> I play it for them and they're like oh that's cool I said yeah it was a gift it's a gift you know you know give it to me he was a powerful man of God he was a home director and he developed all kinds of men and some of those men are all around the world and they're becoming pastors he's a great gift man he gave it to me he was brother pizza Pulvida, and he passed away but this day he walked in and he did that every time I, I get a gift I show it off I give it to somebody I show somebody look this is where this came from and God is saying to all of us today, where's my son in your life? Where's the gift that I gave you? Are you showing it off? Are you showing it to somebody? Can other people tell that you have it? Are you bragging about the gift that I've given you, which is Jesus? Is other people around you being impacted from the gift that I've given you, which is Jesus? You see, my friend, I think that this Christmas we have a lot to think about and we have to understand that this gift is a free gift not because it's cheap but because somebody else paid for it God paid for this gift it's on Jesus but we need to open it allow this gift to impact our life to change us to make a difference in our lives and then we need to show other people that they can benefit they can they can ask questions about about this gift that God has given us. See, I'm afraid, my friend, that today we have some people that have Jesus under a tree with dust and spider webs all over it. And we haven't opened it. And we haven't shown that gift to anybody else. But I can tell you that you cannot wear it if it's still in the box. You got to open it up. You got to let it impact your life. And you got to show it to somebody else. Show it with your life. Show it with your attitude. Show it with your faith. Show it in your family, at work, at church, at school. And everywhere you go that other people will know. You see, when the majority of people in our society live their lives in fear and with anxieties depressed and hopeless there are many out there that are suicidal and on pills to cope with the challenges of life you and i my friend can live differently hello somebody you and i can live different with a positive full of faith type of attitude a life that shows jesus in our lives we live our lives excited about our future. Not because our lives are perfect, but because we have received and we have opened the great gift of life and hope that only Jesus can provide for each and every one of us. If you have opened that gift, I want you to give the Lord a good praise. Hallelujah. It is a gift of life, a new hope through Jesus Christ, our King. It is a gift of victory over fear. It is a gift of assurance that God is alive and is in full control of every situation of all of our lives. This is the hope that we have in Jesus. 
The Bible tells us that he who started a great work in us will complete it on that day in Christ Jesus. Show off the gift of life and the hope that is given to every one of us. Let the world know that they have a free gift as well waiting for them to open it up, to receive it and to open it up. Let this Christmas, this season of Christmas, be that type of season where you offer this gift, where other people ask you, where you tell people about this awesome, greatest gift of all that God has ever given mankind, which is hope and salvation and a new life on only in this gift, his son Jesus. If you believe that, give the Lord a good praise because he is a good God. Now listen to this. In Romans 11, 13 and 14, this is what the Apostle Paul tells the, Roman, the Romans. He says, I am saying all this, especially for you Gentiles. He's speaking to them. People uh, 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 apart or a people uh, 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 not Jewish people. See, God has appointed me, he says, in Romans 11, 13, and 14. I'm saying all this, especially for you Gentiles. God has appointed me as the apostle to the Gentiles. I stress this, he says, for I, once, I want somehow to make the people of Israel jealous of what you Gentiles have, so I might save some of them. You know, you know what he was saying? He's saying, hey, look, God chose the Israelite, Jewish people. We came with a message and they rejected it. They didn't want the gift. They don't want to receive it. They don't want to open it. He says, so God, God moved to begin to save the Gentiles outside of the Jewish people. God appointed me to come and to minister to all of you. And then he says, I'm doing a... I'm working hard to try to, to give this gift to all the Gentiles so that they can begin to benefit from it. And then he says, and as you begin to benefit by receiving this gift, I want my people to begin to look at the benefits you have in Jesus and get so jealous of you that they begin to also come looking for the gift and they also get saved because I'm provoking my people to jealousy because of what you have in Jesus. You know what he was saying? He says, when you open this gift, your life is going to begin to show it so much. The blessings of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the mercies of God is going to come upon your life. Even blessings, great blessings in your life will come about. And when my people, the Jewish people begin to see that, they're going to want Jesus in their lives as well. You know what he was saying? He was saying, Make sure that the gift that you open, that you wear it, so other people can become jealous of what you have. Oh, Jesus. Let me ask you this. Is anybody at your work saying, I want what you have? Are they saying that or saying, I don't, I don't want to hang out with that one, man. She is so negative. Don't, don't even, you know, I don't want to talk to that one. Don't, don't let me work close to that one. Because it's got, it's got a spirit that I don't like. Huh? Sometimes this happens. But the Apostle Paul is saying, man, he's saying, he says, I'm working diligently to reach as many Gentiles with a message of hope that only Christ provides so that the Gentiles can experience the life and the hope that is in this gift, Jesus. He wanted them to show the benefits that come upon them when they have accepted Christ into their lives. There's great benefits. There's peace and hope, joy, even material blessings that God begins to bless you with as you accept Jesus in your life. And this is what the Jewish people have rejected. So he was saying, I, I want them to show these blessings in their lives so that my people begin to want Jesus in their lives. How many have Jesus in their lives today? How many have Jesus? He was saying, I want to provoke people to jealousy so that they can embrace the gift of new life that is only found in Christ Jesus. That's all I want to do. That's what he was doing it for. 
And right now, I believe that God is going to minister to all of us. We have a revival song that even, even Pastor James is going to be dancing up here. I, I know. I just, I just see it. Hallelujah. And we're going we're to we're gonna have uh, Lori, Sister Lori, that's going to come. And she has a song. Hallelujah. And I believe this is a revival song of oh, this powerful gift. Jesus, he is an awesome gift to every one of us. Why don't you give him a good, good praise and let's welcome our sister as we get ready. If you guys are ready, there. Come on, I want you to stand to your feet because you're going to dance. You're going to run. Hallelujah. I want you to jump. I want you to shout. Glow it. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, please clap your hands and then move if you want to move. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. It's called Glove Jesus, it. what a wonderful child. If you could please turn it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, oh. seated just for a moment hallelujah glory to God and then the running will begin in a minute pastor James glory to God so remember 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 this gift that we have in Jesus make sure that you receive it first of all make sure you receive this gift don't just live your life and say yeah I know about Jesus I heard about Jesus and all this other stuff and keep on just moving forward without Jesus in your life Receive Jesus. 
If you don't know Jesus, today is your day. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. So first of all, receive it. It's free for you. It's valuable. And it's free for you because somebody else paid for it already. It's paid for. You just got to receive it. Secondly, you need to open it. You need to open it. Don't just leave it there closed. Don't, don't keep Jesus in a box with duct tape on every corner. I wrote on there. Don't keep him in a box. Let him out. Let him out of the box. Allow him to influence you for the better. Allow Jesus to influence your life for the better. And then show him off. Everywhere that you go, yeah, I got Jesus with me. It's a gift. Gift of life. Let others see Jesus in you. When people talk with you, let them say there's something different about you. Something great about that guy. Something so awesome about that young lady. Every time I talk to her, I walk away from there with, with a new uh, something. There's something to the point where they come. What is it? It's Jesus. 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 It's Jesus. Your way of life. Let the way, your way of life speak value. Speak loud. How about this gift, Jesus, in your life? Your winning attitude. When everybody else is, you know, the, all, all kinds of uh, negativity and, and, and all this madness that's going on all throughout the world and darkness. Let there be light in your life. Show that light everywhere that you go. With a good, positive, winning attitude. Be honest when you deal with people. The honesty. There's a lot of stuff out there that's going on. Everybody's lying. Everybody's trying to cut corners. Everybody's trying to do that. Let them, when they deal with you, let them say, man, there's something special about this, this young lady, about this young man. Why? Because they're honest. They live by truth in their lives. It's important that we do those things because it shows Jesus in our lives. To be love and kindness in your life coming out of you. Because Jesus is in you. Now, these are the big questions right here, and we're going we're gonna to finish. How, question number one, how do I receive this gift? How do I receive this gift? Because it sounds cool, I want it. Hello. How do I receive this gift? Which means salvation. How do I get saved? How do I receive it to save my soul? And then second, how do I allow this gift to keep shaping me daily? How do I allow this gift to keep shaping me daily? These are two questions that are big for all of us. If you haven't received this gift, here it is for you. I'm going to tell you how you can receive this gift. If you have already received this gift and it's in your life, here it is, the answer on how it can continue daily to shape our lives. This is a gift that keeps on giving. Hello. It keeps on giving. See, the Bible tells us that Elizabeth became pregnant in her old age. And Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit six months into Elizabeth's pregnancy. Elizabeth was going to have John the Baptist. And of course, Mary was going to have Jesus. And here in Luke chapter 1, verse 57, a couple of verses there. This is about John. John. Remember, John is about to come into the picture because Jesus is coming next. So John is supposed to be the forerunner. He's supposed to open the door. He's supposed to be the primer on the wall before the paint comes on. He, he, he was supposed to come and open the door for Jesus. So here he comes. He's going to be born right here so that he can begin to prepare the hearts of the people to receive the gift that is about to come. So he's about as close as you can get for Jesus coming. And God sends this young, 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 uh, the, 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 this boy. And the Bible tells us there in verse 57, a couple of the verses, it says, The time came for Elizabeth to have her baby. And she gave birth to a son. Hallelujah. This is John. I will read a little bit more. I know I didn't give you all the verses, but I'll read a little bit more here. Her neighbors and relatives heard how wonderful or how wonderfully good the Lord had been to her. And they all rejoiced with her. Hello, somebody. When the baby was a week old, they came to circumcise him. And they were going to name him Zachariah, like the father. After his father. But his mother said, no, his name is John. Oh, come on now. They all said to her, but you have no relatives with that name, John. And they made signs to, to his father. So he says, oh, you're trying to name him John, but we're going to talk to dad. And I know the dad wants him after him, his name. Ask him what name he would want 
for the boy to have. Zechariah asked for a writing table and wrote, because he couldn't talk, remember that? He couldn't talk. His name is John, he wrote on a piece of paper, or whatever it was that he wrote on. How surprised they all were. At that name, Zechariah was able to speak. At that time, at that moment, Zechariah was able to speak again. And he started praising God. The neighbors were all filled with fear. And the news about the, this thing spread throughout all the hill country in Judea. Everyone who heard of it thought about it and asked, listen to this, what is this child going to be? For it was plain that the Lord's power was upon him. They all recognize, man, this is something special with this young boy. This is John. Now, John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he spoke God's message. And he begins to talk to them. But then what he says in verse 76, I believe you have it up there. He says, you, my child. He points to the child and says, you, my child, who will be called a prophet of the Most High God, you will go ahead of the Lord to prepare his road for him. I tell... He says, to tell his people that they will be saved by having their sins forgiven. So here comes John. Remember, he was prophesied before. Here comes John, and he's born now. And now the father is able to speak and, and prophesies over him. And he says, you're going to be the forerunner. You're the one that's going to prepare the hearts of the people for the Messiah, for Jesus that is coming. So John was a witness to the light, a witness to, for Jesus, a forerunner for Jesus. And his message, my friend, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, was John's famous sermon to everybody that he encountered. Every time he preached, can you imagine going to church all the time? And I would just tell you the same thing, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, I say. For the kingdom of God is at hand. He went before Jesus to prepare the hearts of the people to receive this gift that we're talking about here today. Now, he would preach and he would say, you must be born again. You must be born from darkness to light, from death to life. John was announcing that the new king was coming. And had arrived, but the people had to repent. Hello, somebody. The people had to repent before they could be born again. Oh, here we go now. There's something we got to do in order to receive this gift. As a new person that is accepting Jesus in their lives and receiving this gift for the first time, there's something we got to do. And the Bible tells us is repentance. Got to repent, the Bible says. That's what John came and says. Repent. Getting their hearts ready to receive the gift. Repent. You cannot receive this gift unless you repent first. So that's why he came. To now, repentance. I just got a couple minutes. Just stay with me for a moment. Repentance. The Greek word or the original word is metanoia. Metanoia. Two words. Uh, put together for repentance. M E T T A M E T A meta meta, and it means to change one's mind. Remember, we're talking about repentance. To change one's mind, and the second word is N O I A noia. The second word is to perceive or to become aware. So the word repentance is the action, first of all, the action that follows a specific moment of perception. I, I, I'm, I'm going to explain this a little bit because I want you to really, really, really understand. So he says that repentance, repentance is to change our minds at the time that we perceive or we become aware of something. So during the preaching of God's word, during the preaching of John the Baptist, people will begin to understand through his preaching that they were doomed and going to hell if they didn't change. They were able to see that there were some things that were missing in their lives and that there was nothing that could give it to them. And then he will point to Jesus and say, but one is coming. One is about to be here. That is going to give the solution to the problem that you now understand that you have no solution for. He was letting him know there's a big problem that the whole world is in. You all have this problem and you have no answer for it. Oh, wait. 
but the Lamb of God. God is about to bring his son Jesus a gift so that he can provide the solution for the problem that you now know that you have. He was telling the people, I want you to become aware that there's a deep need in your life and there's no way that you can fix it on your own. There's no way that you can buy that answer from anywhere else in this world. Nothing can give you that answer. He says, oh, but the Lamb of God is coming. He takes away the sins of the world. Repent. Repent and be changed. Repent and receive a new life. See, John's message of repentance move the people so much that he will preach to that they all ask they ask in Luke 3 10 he says what shall we do then they were so convicted they were able to see that man we have a problem what can, what can we do then and that's when he will point to Jesus but listen to this listen to this listen to this they my friend realized perceived became aware that there was something missing in their lives they knew it through the preaching of god's word they became aware that there were sinners and doom without cure at all they knew that john 1 verse 35 through 37 says this the next day listen to this the next day john was there again with two of his disciples and when he saw Jesus passing by, he says, look, the Lamb of God, or the gift. Here is the gift that I've been telling you about. Here is the gift that can cure your sin. This is the gift that I've been telling you that has the answers for the rest of your life. This is the one that can give you salvation. This is the one that can forgive you. This is the one that can give you life. I baptize you in water, but this is the one that can baptize you in fire and the Holy Ghost. I speak to you about life, but he is life. He's the one that I've been telling you about. This is the gift that I'm telling you. People don't receive the gift. You know why? Because they don't truly, deeply realize that they need Jesus. I'm okay. You can have all kinds of problems. I'm okay. Unsaved people. Unsaved people can, can be going directly to hell, all kinds of stuff. And they're like, it's cool, I'm all right. I don't need Jesus. No repentance. It doesn't click. See, so they became aware. He said, the next day John was there again with two of his disciples. And when he saw Jesus passing by, he says, look, the Lamb of God, the gift. And the, the Bible says this in the next verse. It says, when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. John was disciple in the perhaps for years. He was teaching them that, that God is coming. And this, this is the way you got to repent. You got to do this. And pointing them to Jesus. One is coming. One is coming that's going to be able to change your life and give you life everlasting. There's one that's going to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. There's one that's coming. And disciples. But the Bible says that when he pointed to Jesus and he saw him, the disciples didn't even ask him a thing. They just went to Jesus and started following Jesus. That's cold, huh? You're discipling somebody and then they walked away from you. But no, 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 he wasn't cold. That was good discipleship. Because John wasn't about himself. John came to point people to the one that can give life everlasting. The one that can give life everlasting. So they went and started following Jesus. And they just went following Jesus. The Bible said they spent the day, the night with him. And then he started calling all their disciples. That's how he brought in all the disciples. Because they, they knew that there was one coming to fix the problem that they had. Doom. An eternity. Away from God. See, John's preachings had revealed a deep need in their lives that only Christ could fill. They repented. They wanted the gift of this new life. It wasn't just a thought, I need to change. Something more, something deeper. They took the next step. John will preach to them, I'll baptize you in water, but he will baptize you with fire. <laughs> I speak to you truth, but he is the truth that can help you recognize your sins, but he will forgive you of all your sins. See, repentance, my friend, also... 
is the heart's response to what the mind is perceiving. Repentance is the heart's response to what the mind is perceiving. In other words, you realize that there's something wrong. You're not going to change nothing by just perceiving and knowing there's something wrong. You become aware of something that is destroying you. Well, that's not repentance. Repentance is what is the next step you're going to take after you realize that there's a problem. Repentance is the heart's response to what the mind is perceiving. And I like this next one. Repentance is progressive. Repentance is progressive. I got one more and we're done. Repentance is progressive. Listen, listen, listen. Repentance is progressively working to shape all of our lives and our character. Towards God's image in us by removing the fruitlessness and barrenness of our lives, rendering us productive in His kingdom. In other words, repentance doesn't just, doesn't just call to repent so that we can accept Jesus. But this repentance is also progressive, meaning that even though we have accepted Jesus, we have repented of our sins and accepted Jesus in our lives, we need to repent every single day. If God is going to continue to change all of us, and we all need change, Come on now. We all need to change. Hello, somebody. That's better. We all need to change. No one in this place is perfect. There's areas of your life. But can I tell you something? We would come to a point in our lives of something that is really messing us up, destroying our testimony or our character or other areas of our life, and we will not change. We'll continue to just keep on moving, and whatever's clever, and we keep on moving forward until one day... It really hits us like, I've never seen it like that. <gasps> Awareness. Oh my God. This is really what, oh my God. I didn't realize I was hurting my wife by treating her like this. Oh God. Oh my God. I didn't realize I was destroying my husband's life by speaking and treating him like that. <gasps> oh my God. That means nothing. Repentance means I'm going to take another step to do things differently than how I did yesterday. Because it's true repentance when we said, now I need to change. Why? I became aware of something that I need to change. My mind became aware of it, but now my true repentance will begin to do things differently. You see, repentance is not, Jesus didn't just come to give gifts so that we can get saved, but also, also, once we get saved, to keep on shaping our lives every single day. People get saved, but it doesn't mean that all of the bad uh, hang-ups and habits and all that stuff are gone. That all of a sudden, you know, their attitude changes from, the, from one day to the next. When we accept Jesus, Jesus comes and gives us salvation. We get saved when we accept Jesus, when we repent of our sins. But then something else begins right there and then. It's a transformation that begins to take place in our lives. And this is up to you. How much you want God or this gift to transform your life and make you better. Accept that gift. Receive it. Open it. Let it impact your life. And continue to allow this gift to keep on shaping you every single day. When the word of God is preached, whenever you face things in life, there's going to be something that is going to go ahead and make you aware of some things in your life that shouldn't be in your life or things that you need to start doing that you're not doing. And you know, lastly, the last thing is that repentance is a choice. Repentance is a choice. Repentance is a choice. That's why a person that doesn't have salvation or, or God in their lives, they can go on in life and they, they, they choose not to accept this gift. But then also, we can walk as Christians that we are. We are saved. We're on our way to heaven. But our lives can be completely miserable because there's things in our lives 
that you know they're messing you up. But not until you come to a place in your life when you say, I need to change this because it's messing me up. There's no true repentance until you take that step to begin to do things differently. Now listen, listen, listen as I close. I, I want the worship team to come up. I, I, I want you to know this and see this clearly. There's areas in your life. That's why God is a personal God. God is a very personal God. He's not going to tell me your business. He's not going to tell you my business. God deals with certain areas of my life and I know it's just between me and God. I know exactly what God is telling me to change or what God is telling me to do or what God is telling me to stop doing. It's between me and God. Just like this walk with God and how God ministers to you is between you and God. I don't know what you need to change or what God is dealing with you, but I can tell you something. That when you repent, when God shows you certain things and you repent, your life, it'll be begin to change it'll begin to change for the better and the better and the better and the better because you're accepting this gift that God is giving you which is Jesus what is Jesus going to do he's going to challenge you and reveal new things in your life that need to change or that you need to begin to do and when he does that Lord Jesus I'm sorry I, I just see certain areas of my life that you're showing me now right individually and then Lord Jesus forgive me forgive me and then take the step to do things differently than how you did it before that means true repentance came into your heart and God will continue to shape your life and build you up and make you a better person a new person because you have accepted this gift and you accepted it by repenting of the things that God is showing you come on give the Lord a good praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus stand to your feet come on stand to your feet thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus we bless your name we bless your name this gift that was given to us this gift his name is Jesus come on lift up your hands just give it two more minutes three more minutes lift up your hands in the presence of God thank you God thank you God come on begin to just lift up your hands to the Lord begin to lift up your hands maybe God is speaking to you and you got to start doing new things or you got to let go of some things in your life and today is a day where you're going to just just let let go and let God in the name of Jesus thank you God lift up your hands and begin to praise him begin to thank him begin to glorify Glorify him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The presence of God is in this place. The presence of God is in this place. You Say God, I hallelujah.